Hello and welcome to UI Builder Bytes. In this video, uh, we're going to take a look at client scripting in UI Builder. Uh, this video is going to be embedded in a blog post uh, where I uh, go through uh, some of the client scripting and what some different terms mean, uh, and then the most common uh, properties and methods and APIs that I've used uh, in UI Builder. Uh, it's all pretty well documented on the developer site uh, if you want to go there and there should be links in this video and on the blog post uh, to the developer site. In this scenario, uh, we're just going to uh, take a look at some of the different methods. It may not be the most practical use case, uh, which if you've watched some of these by now, uh, you, uh, you have realized that uh, we don't do a lot of practical use cases. Uh, but uh, we're going to basically take this plant status page and when I click this button, I want to set uh, a status message here uh, in this stylized text component. So you can see that we have uh, this plant status message client state parameter uh, bound uh, to the text property on the stylized text component. Uh, it's defined here, and uh, we have the initial value set as unknown. Uh, so in my client script, I'm going to grab uh, data values from different places on the page. I'm going to put them all together into a message, and then we're going to set that message uh, as the state, uh, which I have found to be probably the most common thing that I do in client scripts is uh, kind of putting some different values together and setting a client state parameter. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, add a new client script and we'll just call it uh, plant status message. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to grab the name of my plant uh, from this required uh, parameter. So I have a plant name required parameter. Our uh, test value is uh, ethyl uh, for this page. Uh, and so I'm going to say uh, plant name is API <clears throat> dot context and then dot props because uh, this is a page property. And then let's select the plant name. All right, so we have the plant name. The next thing I want to do is grab the first name of the logged in user. So we'll call this user first name. And this is also going to be api.context, but it's a different context. Uh, so we have access to the user's session. Uh, you have lots of different uh, pieces of data in here, but we're going to take a look at the user specifically. And I want that user's first name. All right, and then uh, the next thing we are going to do is uh, we're going to access a client script include and use that uh, to put some of our values together. So let's go and take a look at my client script include. Uh, so I'm over in the platform UI. Uh, I, uh, I think I actually went to the name of this table dot list. It's uh, this is the table name. Uh, sysux client script include. Uh, when you think script include in ServiceNow, um, as a longtime developer, I always think, you know, reusable piece of server side script. Uh, in UI Builder, these are client script includes. Uh, so they are actually reusable pieces of client side code. Uh, so again, this is not server side code, it's client side code. Uh, but it's uh, a way for you to uh, kind of reuse code and uh, make your uh, pages and, and UI builder experiences, um, you know, make it a little more efficient. So in our uh, client script include, uh, we're doing a couple of things. Uh, so I have this get plant name uh, function that we're not going to be using, uh, but I just stuck it in here. And then is my plant happy uh, is what uh, we're going to use here. And so I'm going to pass it a plant name and it's going to tell me my plant is happy. Um, again, yeah, it's, it's kind of a ridiculous use case, uh, but uh, this is what we're doing. So uh, I've got that. So now we need to call that. Uh, so there's a really important step uh, that as I have been doing this demo, uh, I keep forgetting. 
Uh, and that is, uh, I have to tell my client script to use a particular script include. So I'm gonna hit add, and I can't use it until this shows up under here. So uh, you may, I, I have entered this in, selected it, and then forgotten to hit add, and then wondered why it didn't work. You have to hit add um, and, and have it show up there. And then once you do that, you can call that. Uh, and so instead of typing it all in, I'm going to copy paste. And this imports uh, is, uh, is the important part here. So you're using uh, this uh, imports. And then this is the API name of that client script include. If we go back here, uh, this is this API name. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't uh, generate this. Uh, you just name your script include and it generates the API name based on your scope and the name of the script include. So now we can use these. Uh, so the last thing we need to do before we can actually set the value uh, is we need to construct this message uh, that we're going to bind uh, to our plant status message client state parameter. Uh, so let's say, let's just call this plant message. And we're going to say, hello. Uh, first name. And then we're going to use that message. So we're gonna say, is my plant happy? And then remember, we have to pass it something. We're gonna pass it plant name. All right, so this should read, hello, Brad. Uh, what's our plant name? Ethel is happy today, exclamation point. So let's... Uh, Let's use uh, api.setState. Where are you? Set state. There it is. Uh, so this is our set state method. Uh, it needs the name of the client state parameter, which I know is plant status msg. And then we need to pass it a value, which is going to be this one. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to bind this client script uh, to the button click event on this check status button. So it's got uh, one event. We're gonna add an event handler that directly calls this plant status message, message client script. All right, so what should happen here is when I open the page, I should get uh, my unknown to show up. Then when I click the button, it's going to run this client script where it's going to grab this plant name. It's going to grab my first name. It's going to grab uh, the uh, client script include. And then we're going to put those together in a plant message. And then we're going to set this client state parameter to that message. And then it is bound to the stylized text component and unknown should change to our message. So. Let's see if it works. Moment of truth, open. So check status. All right, hello undefined. Oh, my name didn't work. That is, uh, that is unfortunate. Why did my name not work? API context user first name. You know what? It's because we didn't name it correctly. Hello user first name. So let's try again. There we go. Hello, Brad. Ethel is happy. So what if we change the name to something else? Bob is happy. All right. So that is working. It's dynamic. Uh, and, uh, and again, so... Things like uh, accessing um, the page properties, uh, accessing uh, user session information. Uh, we could also access uh, this uh, state that we just uh, that we just set uh, if we wanted to. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we also used a client script include, uh, this plants include. Uh, one of the other things that uh, I call out in the blog post is uh, data resource uh, refreshing and executing. Uh, we actually do that in a different video uh, if you want to see what that looks like. Uh, but basically, if you have a data resource that mutates data, so if it creates or updates data, uh, you can execute it uh, and then you generally pass it um, uh, you pass it a payload basically uh, that uh, it's expecting and then it takes that data and, and sends it to the server and then if you have a um, a data source that uh, doesn't mutate data it's just fetching data uh, then you can do a refresh and get it to uh, fetch your data again so that's helpful if you have done an execute and added data to the server and you want to refresh the data that you have on the page uh, you can do that through a refresh all right thanks for joining